What's up, guys? Welcome to Weigel Friends English, and today we're going to talk about ways that you can get the most out of learning English on YouTube. YouTube is a great platform, especially for learning language, but what's the best way that we can actually use it? There's so many different ideas and there's lots of different things you can do, lots of different types of English channels, lots of different types of English out there. So how can you get the most out of it? So that's what we're gonna tackle in today's video, some pieces of advice from YouTubers, from teachers, to you guys directly as language learning students so you can get the most out of YouTube. So the first thing is that you should be watching consistently. A lot of times when we are learning a language, it actually takes us a little bit of time for us to adjust to the speaker or speaker's voice. And so the right. more you listen to the same speaker, the more you kind of tune your ears to their English, to their language, so that right. you can understand them better and you can have more comprehensible input. Right. And we don't suggest listening to one English YouTube channel all the time. You want, definitely want to have a collection of different English channels, but you do want them to be in the same type of English, yeah. ideally the same region of English that you're talking about, like Southern American English, or whether you're going to be looking for general American English or California English, whatever it is, make sure you choose one type and you choose many different channels that are from that same region. Yeah, the point is, is to have that consistent, regular practice and reinforcement. And a lot of these channels, if you subscribe to them, you will see regular new videos, especially if you subscribe to more than one channel, then mm -hmm. you can have daily English practice right there on your phone or on your device. Easily, easily have daily, probably an hour a day at least, it seems like. Make sure these channels that you're watching, you're not just listening to English teaching channels. Hmm. Because though we all speak a little bit more cleanly for you to be able to understand as an ESL learner, you need to really be listening to native English speakers speak to other native English speakers. Because yeah. then you're going to hear the speed, the rhythm, the mistakes, the slang, all of the spoken grammar, like the way we actually speak, not right. just the way that we speak when we're trying to be understood by people who don't understand us. Right. Right. So you need to be hearing the way that people speak to each other. And just a little hint here, movies are heavily curated. So you're not getting English the way we speak it most of the time when you watch a movie. Our second piece of advice for you guys is to watch the whole video. Yes. I know that it can be tempting to skip forward or skip backwards, but what you're doing is you're basically taking a book and you're going halfway through the book and starting at that page. Right. And so, You've lost so much context. Right. If you do that, you'll end up confusing your language more than actually growing it. So you need right. to learn how does the speaker get here? Where do they develop from? Why are they saying that? I don't know what they right. mean by the word that when they're talking about something. Language always has a logic. There is a flow of logic to every language. And sometimes that flow of logic is not the same language to language. So if you are coming from a language background where you do not structure logic or have flow of thought the same way Americans do or British speakers do, then you're going to have a little bit of confusion. And so if you skip around, nothing's going to make sense. Yeah. You can decide like, oh, they went over here because of this when maybe they went over there or they traced a different trail of logic. The third tip we have for you is to slow the speed down a little bit. And you can do this very easily. YouTube makes it very easy for you guys by going down on the bottom right corner, selecting the options tab and being able to slow down the speed. But the reason why you should try slowing the speed is because again, the goal is to have comprehensible input. Right. A lot of times as native English speakers on YouTube, they don't plan for ESL learners. And so they don't try to adjust their language at all, which is good. But if you're trying to work your way up to better listening, then you need to slowly, gradually right. get faster and faster. Right. It may be wise for you to have a little bit of time with really slowing down to really digest as you go, to be able to keep up with the pace. But then other times that you're just listening to it at full speed. You need to have some time spent listening to full speed English so that your ears and your brain can adjust to the rhythms and the patterns and the speed of speakers as they speak naturally. 
but you also need that time to slow down and to digest what's being said right away so that you can practice comprehending quickly or on the spot. It's a skill and just like anything, you're not gonna start doing push-ups and start by doing 100 push-ups every day. You're not gonna start by running a marathon full speed, but you're going to be doing things slowly. You're gonna slowly work up to it and you're gonna to have to mix your routines. So some days you're gonna do sprint running at a higher speed, but shorter intervals. And other times you're gonna go slow and long. You've got to have a mixture just like in running. You've got to have a mixture in order to build your English speed. The fourth piece of advice for you guys is to turn on the captions. Right. Now. This piece of advice you need to be careful with because sometimes ESL speakers get so bent on captions that they can't listen to something without the captions, right. which is not a good thing. What right. you need to do, like slowing the speed down, is to start with the captions and then go slowly to having no captions. Right, and even mix it up a little bit. Some days allow yourself to have captions and other days don't. But if you use captions here at Wagwell Friends English, Josh actually goes through the pain of doing that every single video. He spends over an hour on every single video we do to make sure the captions are correct. So you can always turn those on in our videos. Number five is to take notes while you're listening. YouTube is great because it's a lot of listening practice, more than you could ever need. Mm -hmm. But listening is only as good as if you can take notes and if you can actually digest it. Because yes. if we just listen to things, I can listen to music, I can listen to Mandarin, but in reality, it's just white noise playing in the background. Right, it's in one ear, out the other. So what you need to do is try to figure out ways that you can take regular notes. Maybe you get one notebook and that's your YouTube notebook and take regular notes to try to figure out how can you capture these things that you're listening and keep them and then also use them? Right, and we've got a note-taking video here on different ways that you can take notes for different types of videos or to suit you as a, as a listener. Number six is to look up words and phrases that you don't know. We build vocabulary over a long time. Regardless of what people say about learning thousands of words in two days, we learn words slowly over a long time. And these words are not gonna be helpful alone because otherwise you'll structure your sentences and your word usage based off of noun, verb, and object. And that will just that will just get you ending up with very strange patterns. What you need to use is acceptable English patterns. And the way to do that is to learn words and vocabulary in the phrases inside the context of what they're doing. So when you write down these words and phrases and look them up, I want you to have like this vocabulary book or something like that where you write down the word inside the phrase it was used in or the sentence is even better. But then note the context. What were they talking about? What did they mean? Were they directing it to somebody or anybody? Were they making a general statement that's true most of the time? Or were they talking about a very specific point? What was it? Yeah. Because there are some terms we use only in the subjunctive mood. And there are some terms that we use only when we're stating a fact. So yeah. you've got to know what we're using when and how and where. It's just like your own language. Every language does this. Yeah, and YouTube has a really great function of actually being able to see the transcript. And you can copy directly from that transcript to get the exact context and the sentence that that word is used in. The next one is the verbally speak or write out sentences using the new target terms that you've learned or picked up in the video. You cannot just listen and do nothing with it. Right, you will just forget it. So one of the best things that you can do is speak it. Speak it exactly the way you saw the speaker do it in the video and imitate them. Imitate their paralanguage, their body language, their facial expressions, their tone of voice as they do it because that was how they used it in that context and that's how you can use it in that context as well. But you should also take some time to write a couple of sentences just to make sure that you're putting the pieces together properly. So parroting or to mimic a person is a great intro into learning a new word or phrase or construction, but then after that you need to use that word or phrase in a new context, so just to make sure that you know exactly how it's used. And the eighth and final piece of advice that we have for you guys is download as many resources as you can. A lot of YouTube channels will provide worksheets and outlines and workbooks and transcripts, quizzes, quizzes for you guys so that you can 
actually practice this and actually work this out in a way that can keep you accountable to your listening. Right, and we do that with several videos here on YouTube. So make sure you pay attention to whether we have a link in the description for you to sign up for and to get these worksheets because this is free practice from teachers, Yeah. right? And other people, maybe they have links to t-shirts or merch or something like that. You don't have to do those. But if a teacher says, hey, I've got a worksheet for you below, that is free practice. Absolutely do that. Yeah. Well, guys, that's it. And we hope that you're able to use these eight tips in order to get more out of YouTube, especially in the next year. Absolutely. We hope that you guys can use these resources that are provided for you free of charge so that you guys can have better English because that's what we're all about is to try to help our students get better English so that they can be able to use it acceptably in context. That's right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.